Sato's Place in Nashville Gives Thanks is brought to you by Vintage King, Recording Connection, Audio Technica, and Studio 202. We were in beautiful Nashville on a chilly Saturday evening at an incredible recording facility known as Blackbird Studios. Gathered were 18 of country music's best and brightest. They included country superstar Martina McBride, educator, entrepreneur, and engineer John McBride, super producer Dan Huff, songwriter of the year Rodney Clausen, bluegrass chanteuse and proud daughter of Buddy Melanie Cannon, Kenny Chesney producer and proud dad of Melanie. Buddy Cannon, Front of House Live and brilliant thinker Brett Scoop Blandon, mixer extraordinaire Justin Niebank, producer and proprietor of Legends Studio Dan Frizzell, producer, programmer, and composer Dave Huff, Dave Pensado mentor and engineer Ed C, teacher and editor Kevin Becca. Engineer, Tony Castle. Session whiz, John Willis. Vocalist and PR executive, Stephanie Willis. Fierce songwriter, advocate, and musician, Steve Bogart. Our Thanksgiving meal was prepared by one of Nashville's premier eateries, Flight World Dining and Wine, and presented and prepared by Chef Matt Lackey. Dinner was served, a prayer was said, and the conversation began. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. It's great to see you. We are in for a very special treat. It's certainly been a treat for all of us at Pensado's Place, and we wanted to bring this treat to you. Um, from one email, a ton of work, a bunch of super caring and giving individuals, the spirit of a sassy blonde named Stephanie, um, we have found ourselves here. And where is here? Well, I'll tell you what Dave and I think here is. Here is literally a veritable music temple. We hope if you ever get an opportunity to come down and visit this musical mecca, it will change your life. Um, we're in Studio C of one of the most extraordinary facilities on the planet. Um, we're at the most extraordinary school. Probably so. No, no uh, PC here. We are at John and Martina McBride's Blackbird Studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and it is extraordinary. Wouldn't you say, sir? Man, I'm telling you what, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that simple. Yes. There's not much else to say. Um, as you can tell, we're enjoying Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it's served from Flight's World Dining, Flight World Dining and Wine. This is literally one of Nashville's premier restaurants. The chef, Chef Matt Lackey, um, he's been nominated for a bunch of awards for Best New Chef. He is one of 15 young guns to watch. Um, I'm a little upset because while I'm talking, everybody else is eating, and I don't have an option out. Really so if, if we edit and just go to black, that's because I'm going to eat, and I'll be back to you. Um, he's personally prepared this meal, and we're really honored. Thank you, Flight. Thank you, Chef Matt. Um, we have an incredible panel put together. Why don't, here's, let me just pose this question. As we've been here and as we watch it and all that kind of stuff, and I have a weird background that I was born in Montreal but grew up in Kentucky. So I was around bluegrass and I hung out and so, so forth. And I've always loved the passion that's here. Um, but the music business now reminds me kind of a wildfire. It's like it creates its own wind. It, it's just turned into this very powerful thing. There's new business deal structures and this massive global touring and there's the power of television and you know, CMT and and Nashville, the new show, and there's technology issues, and different kinds of country are emerging. But honestly, doesn't it all still start with a great song? Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh, it all, right? Yep. It should. Talk about it. It all begins with the song is the motto of the Nashville Songwriters Association in ah. Nashville. Ah. 42 years, a bunch of, bunch of songwriters got together and said, why aren't our names on the record? Ooh. And they started, they found a, a motto, it all begins with a song, and we've changed the U.S. tax code, we've changed a lot of things. That's so that, that comes out of Nashville, it all begins with a song. 
I think that's true. Ronnie, you feel that way? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> thank you for that efficient answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to eat. That's why I need him to right talk there. more so I can get some turkey. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just give me a signal, and John and I'll carry this thing all the way home by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> you all in my fallback position, my safety net. Oh, John's going for food. I might not have him for a minute. So, so John Wills, let me ask you this: as a session guy, can you tell the difference when you're playing on a like a really great song and a song that's just okay? This, can you feel that? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Like, it plays itself. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to tell my staff that you never had to really think about a hit. Like a hit will just jump out and grab your soul and just shake you. Then, if you start debating afterwards, it's sort of good. It's kind of good. If it does this, it will be good. It may turn into a hit, but it's not a hit there. You agree, Melanie? Oh, I do. I do. I think people spend a lot of uh, extra money they don't have to in the studios. You know, they spend too much time doing and redoing when they should go in. John knows when the magic happens, it happens and it's instant. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't have that you know luxury to only do it once with musicians like John and mm -hmm. others like him. But mm -hmm. Justin from uh, from we're, we're the. We're the top dogs in the room, Justin. You know that. <laughs> from your perspective, <laughs> from your perspective, <laughs> Justin, when you're working, do you do you know it's a hit while you're working on it? It's amazing to me. Yeah, it's absolutely true. There's times when I put stuff up and I work on it all day long to make it sound like a hit, and sometimes the songs that sound like a hit will become a hit. But it's always amazing to me when I hear something in the first five minutes, I'm like, this is going to be the greatest day ever because I don't have to do anything. It's all going to happen by itself. Mm. Ed C., my mentor, taught me how to turn anything into a hit. I see that you have that same skill also, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Ed, share with him. Don't be stingy. I don't have that. Uh, you know, I did. I do remember once I, I, I mixed a project I mixed a song and turned it into uh, it was CBS at the time, and they were um, they were it, it, the mix was fortified and it came out popping. It was great, and they turned it in and and uh, they were all dancing around and high fiving. And a couple of days later, they said, "Wait a second, this is a great mix, but we don't even like this song." <laughs> <laughs> and it took a while to kind of get over the, the the impact to realize the song really wasn't there. So actually, it was, actually, that takes. Special skill to turn people against a song. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it just—you really can't do that. You can enhance what's there, and you can—I mean, every song should sound like a hit, but they're all not hits. Right. What's right. A, what do you say when you're sportified? You got to tell me what that. Means. I made it an exciting in every way, <laughs> with EQ, with the tools that I had, <laughs> um, uh, uh, and the, you know, with the, the EQ and with compression and with the right. Uh, the right pushing up the good stuff and turning down the bad stuff, and uh, hmm. editing out the bad stuff. And it was so loud. You're saying it was really loud. <laughs> actually, it, just, <laughs> it was actually before records started to get so loud. Yeah. You know, this was right, right. it was the later '80s. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it, it just there's no substitute for the great song. Yeah. Tony, from your seat. When, when something is not great, do you notice? Yeah, I mean, from the recording side of it. Yeah. When um, the guys don't complain as much about headphone mixers, like if the song's just there, mm -hmm. you know, it mm -hmm. just it seems to cut itself, like John said. Mm. I mean, it just everything just comes together. Mm -hmm. More of those for all of us, correct? Yeah. Buddy, what about you? What do you think? I caught you right in midline. <laughs> Midwater. <laughs> Uh, I used to work for Mel Tillis, and he had a saying. He he said, "You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit." That's exactly. <laughs> right. And happy Thanksgiving. And, and that <laughs> <laughs> now, now I want to check and see what I have on my plate. Just to make sure. uh, and, you know, I mean, I listen to a lot of songs, and sometimes after days and days of hearing what sounds like the same song over and over i, I, I start doubting myself mm -hmm. can i just not hear you know mm -hmm. and then all, all at once I'll, I'll play one and it'll be some magic you know and jumps out of you yeah jumps, jumps out, out and you just 
take a deep breath and say, okay, I'm not nuts. <laughs> and, exactly. and, you exactly. know, from, a, from, a, from an artist's perspective, Martina, and, and, you know, it's, I'm, there's probably, how does the process work with you? Are, are there people sort of, you know, vetting these songs before they get to you and then they try to give you the best ones? Are you the final arbiter of the choice of what you do? How, is that how it works? Yeah, I definitely choose my own songs and I listen to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. And, and like everybody has said here, the ones that are right just stand out mm -hmm. from the rest, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and they just, they just stand out and make you feel something. Yeah. 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 And you kind of, I find that, you know, as a manager, you just wait for that. Like, if it doesn't there, I can't substitute it, I don't want to. And sometimes you got deadlines and pressures and all that kind of stuff, but you just really have to wait till, till, it's, till it's right. Otherwise, you know you're making a mistake. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I've always found that most of the songs that I've recorded, 99.9%, I, I immediately hear it. I don't ever have to live with the song. You know, usually the ones I have to live with, I end up not cutting. Yeah. There's no, there's no there there. Something's you know what I mean? Wrong. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's the ones that hit you immediately that you, before the sec, you know, right after the first chorus, you say, mm -hmm. I want to sing that song mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Dan, from your perspective as uh, one of the leaders of the uh, current Nashville music scene, do you ever think about the past Nashville, the history of Nashville, when you're making a modern record? Does it cross your mind? No, <laughs> really? and, you know, and, and no. I mean, I don't. I don't mean that disrespectfully or anything. I, I mean, you know, we grew up here, it, it, so I mean, so it's in you your know, DNA. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly here since we. I think we moved. Our family moved here at, at the end of the '60s mm -hmm. or, or '70s, something like the beginning of '70s. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously we were introduced because our father is a musician, yeah. and and we were introduced to the recording community. Um, very different back then than it was now as a matter of fact it, back then it wasn't it wasn't real uh shall we say warm and fuzzy to to young talent mm -hmm. and so it, it kind of pushed i mean i won't speak for dave but I, but it, it i i felt like i had to go somewhere else to kind of get in and then we moved back here mm -hmm. aware of of the heritage the great heritage of the place but you know it's morphed and changed and it continues to morph and change so you know just a healthy respect yeah you said that uh in the past, they weren't warm and fuzzy to the young talent. That young talent is now the old talent. <laughs> yeah, um, are those I guys hate young talent, one hundred percent. Dan, are those guys fuzzy now yeah, and yeah. warm to the new guys? Hey, there, there's there's stuff for the young kids to keep them warm and fuzzy. Right? <laughs> there's there's enough influence in it now. I just hope they're warm and fuzzy towards us old guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, You're not the old guy, my friend. <laughs> certain empathy for it because you know if you you know again not a victim complex, but. But it was it wasn't like the West Coast that was it th thrived at that in the, on the early 80s it was thriving on young talent mm -hmm. Nashville is kind of like you earn your stripes kid and you know we'll talk to you in 10 years mm -hmm. this this community is so thriving and, and and so alive with so many different dimensions of music um, you hopefully we'll learn the lessons you know from from our past so from from your chair are, you're you you're constantly dealing with the kind of where a band is tracking and you're producing that, as well as sometimes there's programming elements and other kinds of things. Are you, you, you have to be available and ready for any way it goes, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this, is, this, is, this is now a, a viable music melting pot Absolutely. in the world. And, and yeah, I mean, certainly at least aware, at least to know who to call. I mean, for me, luckily, my, my, my brother... <laughs> <laughs> will we'll work with me uh, in the areas that I'm not adept at. So, mm -hmm. and you know, but yeah, you have to be very aware of all everything. Yeah. Speaking of your brother, <laughs> uh, Dave and I have this discussion all the time. Is it possible to make a Nashville record, a, a, a great country record, in LA? Not you don't get to. I, I, I get to set yeah, the rules. I would, I would. You don't get to import musicians. See, I, I can answer it first while you know. think about that. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I've said no. I know I've you said, said no, no many <laughs> times because, because I think the it's it's not a slam on players. There's amazing players in L.A. too. I work in L.A. all the time, mm -hmm. but there is a uniqueness about about the synergy of, of people playing in the same room at the same time in Nashville. That's unlike I travel all over the place. And I, I don't find it anywhere else but Nashville. Yeah, it's a very unique music community. Mm -hmm. You know in and you, you can put there, there. There's so many great players, you know, five, six players deep on each instrument. And you can you can mash them up on different projects, and and it's 
always the same result. I mean, they play together like no, no nowhere I, else. If I like that to a sports team analogy. That chemistry, yeah. when it's working, you can't just stick other things in and keep that chemistry. Yeah. Is that is that fair? Exactly. To me, it's very, very... Yeah. You know, the the yeah. system, I think... I, think I, I, I wanted to say... No, I mean, I mean, see, yes, mm -hmm. but I understand what Dave's saying, and and maybe I maybe if I can use the sports analogies, it, it maybe it's maybe Nashville is 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 Bill Belichick, uh -huh. because certainly all of all, you know all the components are not from here. We're some of the only people I know from here, yeah. so it's it's not being bred in Nashville, but there is the system. Maybe yeah. that's maybe that's the coach, and 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 we bring all these parts here, and it, it, it we're able to do this type and, of thing. And I don't think that that system exists anyplace else. I mean, as mm -hmm. I try to research and preparing for this, I just that's one of the defining factors about this community, amongst others, yeah. Yeah. that is really unique to it, and then to the music. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just it's, well, I, it's I, spectacular. I, get, I was just telling Dave, there's there's energy here in Nashville musically. When you get off the plane, you can feel it. I travel and work in so many different markets, and this is very unique here. I mean, all of them are great. This is just very, very unique in that sense, mm -hmm. player-wise. It's, it's, you know, it's a little bit more disjointed. It's a little bit more single-player overdubbing in LA. That's, yeah. it's more that than, than here. It's more everybody together and mm -hmm. really gelling together. And it brings unique, people play off each other mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. and it's unique. This was really, too, I, I think, I think this, this town kind of earned its stripes the honest way. I mean, it was really when when I was growing up, it we always felt kind of second fiddle to to the coasts. Yeah, plural, you know. And uh, I guess it went through the '90s where all of a sudden there was this great infusion of success, a lot, a lot of money that came through town. Yeah. And, and then after you know after that kind of leveled out, it, it, it became a place where where you know you uh, serious music has been. It's not just success and and money. Yeah. But but. Certainly, more musicians, engineers, and producers have migrated here, and now it's 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 kind of, it's it's the next coast, is what it can is. I, yeah. Can I tell you what I think? I personally have noticed, and I, Dave and I have have talked about, um, <clears throat> as of this taping in this airing, we spent three days here preparing for this. Um, the passion in this town for music is unbridled. Mm. It mm. is it is so about the core. And then the other things around the core, and in other places, other things represent the core, mm -hmm. and sometimes the music becomes part of that. And that flip is definitive from the time you get off the plane, mm -hmm. let alone when you start meeting people. And I think sometimes it's easier to notice when you're an outsider, because it yeah. hit me like a ton of bricks, um, and it's just been liberating. Like like this is kind of what I got into it for. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And people who've been in it for a short time or a long time seem to carry that torch. It is, it's refreshing. Yeah. Do you agree? Sounds yeah. like you met John McBride off the plane. Listen, he's, man, he's, he's the emissary of uh, uh, all the, I call him the mayor of Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah once he gets you, he's got you. Wow. <laughs> the, the history of Nashville and country music is just so rich. You know, they're just legendary stuff. So from what you've learned, you know, we're all standing on the shoulders of other folks and we're moving forward. And I always find it's our responsibility to try to honor that and move it forward for those who really care about it. So, did you guys? Are there lessons that you learned from the past that you that you that you're bringing forward? Do you find those traditions are dying? Are you having to fight to keep them? And is is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that evolution? I mean, buddy, you've seen. I mean, the first thing you said was Mel Tillis. So you've seen so much. Are people preserving some of those traditions? Are they going away? It seems right now and today and. Today's environment that that no, they're, they're just not. Going away. But I think in the bigger picture, uh, it is being preserved. You know, mm -hmm. the phase we're in right now is kind of not not really. Uh, I think things that are going to be remembered 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. But I keep thinking that just around the curve out there somewhere, there's a there's a, a another. Uh, I don't know. Somebody new who's gonna gonna change the tide, and and the magic's gonna come back. And, and do you think an artist makes that happen, or people who like you guys, some behind the scenes? I keep hoping that I will find, run into uh, a twenty-year-old kid that looks like Hunter Hayes and yeah. sounds like George Jones. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and call, that, call me when you do if that. If that happens, <laughs> then everything's gonna change. Right. Yeah. Right. Because artists usually lead the way, and then people follow that. Yeah. But I think one thing we have is is a sense of community, 
that that is an amazing thing. When I moved here in the early 80s, uh -huh. guys, Rory Burke, Charlie Black, took me kind of under their wing, and there was no zero-sum mentality. Yeah. There was no great songs begot more great songs, and great music made better music. And I think there's a lot of that still alive mm -hmm. where I've had people pitch songs that they had no interest in, and, and I made a bunch of money and got a lot of stuff going on sure. because they liked the song. Right. And I think we're still a song town. I, we're still a song town. Yeah, I, I think it's the heart of Nashville. I mean, yeah. we've been here, you know, like I said earlier, we've been here three days, and I am, I am just so stunned that what I got in the music business for lives here still. Yeah. It's not any place else I go. But li listen, John McGrath took us on a half hour tour and half five hour hour, tour. hold on, hold on. <laughs> and, 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 and five hours later, yeah. once the tour was over. Oh, I got you. But all five hours, <laughs> that's all right. But all five hours was just about passion. Yeah. It was just, it, and look, he has probably given that tour two trillion times. And we were just as excited. We were knocking over Dr. Peppers and the mic locker, and all three of us were jumping on the ground, getting them up. And, and he was as passionate about mics as he was about speakers and about diffusers. And, and then we stopped and we listened to, you know, Thriller and Five Point One. And all of it was this place of just like almost like a kid. And that would never happen on the coast. It's not, it's not, it's not like people don't love the music, but the ability to show it and to be around other people to show it. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's so distinctive to me. It's, it's refreshing, and, and what I hope, and the reason I asked the tradition question, is that you all never change that. It's so important. It's, it's, there's something that, that's elevating. I, I feel like what it is is that sometimes when I've watched Dad in the business my whole life, it's yeah. all I've ever known, and yeah. sometimes those breaks, the come and the go of, of what things happen, they come around and go, you know, mm -hmm. they always come back, but it's our, our place and our... Uh, we have to tell those kids, the new ones that are coming up, we've got to teach them about the integrity of our town. Because if we don't teach them, they're never going to know. And a lot of them are coming in on a higher, you know, coming in off of winning things or, yeah. you know, at a place where, you know, they didn't come up through this town. And if you don't, you don't know that that's here. And that's what we, that's what we're about, you that's know, right. in the community. I mean, we all, we're all singers and song people, and that's what it is. I mean, we have to teach them. It's our responsibility to teach that's the right. new ones. Uh, you, you reminded me of something uh, I think is important for the, for this discussion. It seems like back in the day, it, it felt like Nash, like the like the artists and the songwriters led the public. It feels like today the public leads the songwriters and the and the artists. In other words, if the public demands songs about smoking pot, then we have a lot of songs about smoking pot. It seems like back in the day, back in the day, ten, twelve years ago, that wouldn't happen. The 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 talent led the public and educated them like you said and they didn't look at it as a responsibility they looked at it as take it or leave it it, it was a little arrogance you know and i mean you know with the exception of willie nelson of course but <laughs> 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 right dan <laughs> and, 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 and how do we how do we reverse that you know what i'm saying if the public <clears throat> demands something there's going to be a lot of people that are going to make money by fulfilling that demand uh, it, it happens in all across culture television cars whatever you know what i'm saying how do we how do we subvert that how do we change that and should we if, if you follow the money then the difference in now and what you refer to as then is a record label an artist and a songwriter could make a ton of money with a hit record mm -hmm. that moved people on the radio mm -hmm. and people went and bought the month bought the bought the product now it's not about that. It's about moving live audiences. It's about it's about creating excitement on stage. It's about some digital stuff that maybe we'll get into later. Mm -hmm. But well, about but it's a whole different it's a whole different paradigm now. So that so that the, commerce is going to create what commerce creates. I don't. I, I'm not quite following you. Are you saying that today an artist? Creates product to drive people to the live show rather yeah, than to have something. Absolutely, hold because, chairs and because listen Because is, is he gonna is he gonna oh, sell three you. million? Is Nora Jones gonna sell sell ten, ten million records today? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. she's not gonna. She's got to fill seats. Her label's got to fill seats. They give the song away. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. a there's a whole different paradigm in 
in where in in how the how the, where the money flows. So it can devalue it can devalue the the, 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 the chain the, the equity chain the the end product doesn't have the same value because you're trying to get, make money in other places. Right. So so scoop. Have you seen from the live side just this sort of and John as well too just this incredible growth and this intensity and, and stuff? Do you do you see it? Do you feel it? I think that they fuel each other. Uh, you know, John's got a lot more history and and speaking of history, I think we've all learned from each other in this room. Sure. But I think that from the artist side, I think that it's you know marketing and advertising as well. You know, are you trying to fill the seat or are you trying to sell the record? And I think that it's a, a gentle. And, and at the same time, abrasive symbiosis. You know, mm -hmm. what's your target demographic? Who's involved? You know, what's it's your stage? So clinical. You know, where are you do, where are you doing your shows? Yeah. You know, is it summertime in outdoor amphitheaters, or are you doing a really intimate thing in performing arts centers? They're all different. You know, it's an advertising thing as well, but it still is about the song. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and. I think the song, it comes back to who you're selling the song to. Mm -hmm. And the larger your demographic, be it a live audience, you know, are, are you the season ticket holder in a, in a performing arts center? Are you the summer country music fan in Wisconsin that has one month to get out of the house? Right. And they want to go hear every song that's on the radio that they're cooped up with all year. Right. You know, at that point, man, it's more about music to those people, mm -hmm. I think, often than your season ticket, you know, performing arts center crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally different intimacy factor, mm -hmm. but the song still matters. Mm -hmm. Once, once the cat get, gets out of the bag, can we put it back? I mean, is th this is bigger than just Nashville? It's a cultural shift. It's a paradigm shift. It's it, it has connections to a, a rapid pace in our society and culture. It's tied into the internet. It's tied into the readily available mass consumption of media that can just burn up something so fast. Is it something that that that, that we can change? I mean, I think we can continue to inspire. I think Martina's done a great job yeah. inspiring the youth, the next generation. You know, believing in America and family, the, the quality things. Is society going to follow suit? That's a good question. I don't think that that's any of our problem, but con our contribution, opportunity, and, and maybe responsibility? Absolutely. And, and, Investing and, in the kids with John's new school. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pay it forward. We were talking about Owen Bradley earlier mm -hmm. and one of the founders and, and you know recording fathers in Nashville. And when you guys were talking about a song earlier, I remember standing there with Owen a couple of weeks before he died. He was playing me Mandy Barnett. Wow. And he and we were sitting in his room and on dat and he goes, I don't know what, why I like it. It just feels good. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's all it needed. Next to be. song, Owen just goes you know waddling around his way. Yeah. But man, we've all just said that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To Melanie's point, you know, um, Martina, I think that, don't you think that we all have to sort of be concerned about, we have to mentor the youth in order for them to know where to go. Do you, do you feel that way? I, I definitely agree with that, yeah. Especially, you know, with some place as special as Nashville and mm -hmm. the, something that is as, as um, special as, as our heritage and our history and country music. It's yeah. really important that we, that we pass that along and that mm -hmm. we honor it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, mentoring is is so important. It's it doesn't. I don't know that it gets done as often as it should. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think it's, you know, speaking from you know just from my own perspective, mm -hmm. as a young artist, it's hard to walk up to your yeah. idol or to someone that you really look up to and feel even worthy to to ask a question. You know, it's a little <laughs> awkward. It, I've always felt, uh, um, and I know a lot of artists do. And then. You know, what do you say to someone? Say people say, "What's your advice?" Right. It's like you know, I always say, "Be true to yourself." But that's that's really true. But it's not easy for everybody to do, mm -hmm. and everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. So there's no handbook that you can hand over right. and say, "If you do these things, this it's all going to be okay." Right, right. So it's it's difficult mentoring, but I think it's really important. I do believe it, and. Um, yeah. yeah. They and, need to and know it, that the Grand Ole Opry means something. You know, yeah, it's not it's just a place to stand. You know, I mean, that's right. it's, yeah. that circle is life and breath to mm -hmm. our industry. That's and right. so many just cross mm -hmm. that that stage and don't ever breathe that second in. And I mean, it just it's it's right. everything to what we do. So, Kevin, you, you see hope. I mean, you're at this yeah, incredible. Yeah, you know, what's, you know, there's no guarantee for anybody. Mm -hmm. But if you display the way that you should operate, mm -hmm. even as a person, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and attitude is 99 percent of the gigs the motto we have, and that you know, get that point across, and then show them the incredible 
ways you can record with all the gear that's been making records here for the last 10 years. Yeah. You know? So that kind of thing is really strong and we're changing lives with it, you know? And yeah. it's, it's a great way to, to really, like you said, pay it forward and also just carry the legacy through, you know? Because what's happened is now that anybody can go and buy a studio uh, out of a box, yeah. the, the, the legacy of the, the skills has been lost yeah you know so what we're trying to do is get back into the groove with that and it's been only been a short time since that's been available you know so you know when you build it in when i came up you had to go to a studio mm -hmm. you know and then kind of the adat thing chipped away at that and then you go through time and and technology changes in any industry and the way it's worked for us is now that we've, we've come around i think we've turned a corner because i think we're right on the edge of what needs to happen mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of traction from larger universities that are coming to us and saying, look, you know, we know what you're doing is incredible and we mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. So, And, and we've, we've had, for whatever it's worth, and maybe this is for hope reasons, we've had the same, same experience with the show. We're here because of that. I mean, you know, when we came with this idea, could I have ever said, oh, you know, give me like a couple months. We'll be, you know, we'll be down with John and Martina McBride's and we'll be hanging out with all the legends and, you know, <laughs> no, just like we can do. Never believed and, and what we're finding is that kids are not only, and not just kids, number one, learners. Mm -hmm. And those go from 18 to 50, even those who don't have a shot at professionally. But the thing that has blown me away the most, and Dave, I think, is how inspired they are. It's not like I just want to go make money. It's like, this means the world to me, and this information means the world to me, and I, I'll move because you said so, or I'll try to do better because you said so. And I think there's some notion out there, something feels like it's moving, but, but, it, but it's important, and what you guys are doing is so important, and all those who care about it, is you gotta give it to them right. Because we don't know who's giving it to them wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, we do know some, <laughs> but uh, we do know some. That's, that's, just, that's just the truth. Um, we've all seen it from our different positions. But it seems like when you give it to them correct, you get somebody who's just ready to go after it in the way we did when we came up and do it for the right reasons. Did, is that what you guys experienced? Yes. The reason you guys, well, we did the, uh, or you did the uh, event at Belmont the other yes. night. And I was inspired by that just because of the attitude and the turnout and the enthusiasm in that room. Mm -hmm. I, it seemed, I, I did like a rough count. It seemed like five, 600 people. Yeah. And, and and they were asking great questions, and yep. there was engagement, and mm -hmm. you know they were there because what you guys have created uh, is exactly what we're trying to do: is is put knowledge into small digestible <coughs> chunks mm -hmm. that you know we, each one of your shows is just incredible to watch. It's mm -hmm. just you know there's there's an interview, there's tips from Dave, mm -hmm. there's questions. You put people on the hot seat, you have them going back and forth, and it's like, what's your favorite kick drum mic or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know? And, mm -hmm. and people are hungry for that knowledge because there's no legacy now. To go back into the studio and be a and, and be an apprentice, you know right. that's gone. Right. So now we we're, what we're doing is y you and us both are creating a way that brings the apprenticeship model back mm -hmm. and and makes a strong case for the way education needs to be in the future. Yeah, sure. So, so I, oh, I have a sure. I have a are you going to eat that? <laughs> 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 Welcome to Dave Pensado. <laughs> Please go ahead. Uh, absolutely. So so here so this is sort of interesting. This is an example of where technology is a good thing. But sometimes technology is not a good thing. So, you know, digital in this community and lots of communities, there's a mixed bag to that. So, digital downloads, how is that in Nashville and country world? Fire it up. Fire it up. First of all, the the two copyright system in America is broken. Okay. There's a there's a, a 1909 copyright for the sound for the underlying work writers and publishers, mm -hmm. and there's a 1978 copyright for the sound recording. They're both important. In the, in the world of sync, it's all fair, because we both operate on a, the basis of, of, of free market. Mm -hmm. We operate, it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. we, we get a, a McGraw cut in a movie, record label and Tim get 50 grand, all the writers in the and the publishers get 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. That kind of works in the physical thing. We get 9.1 cents compared to the 30 cents mm. that the label and the artist get. Mm -hmm. 
So it's still a small, but it's like, okay, like 10% of the other thing. That's kind of cool. Then you move into the digital marketplace. And if the world goes to streaming like we, like we want, we, like we think, mm-hmm. it's all going to be downloads, it's all going to be Pandora and Spotify. That's 14 to 1, Ooh. 17 to 1 sound recording to underlying work. Wow. That's because everything in, in, the, in the songwriter copyright Everything is under the thumb of the government. Everything uh, is under the Copyright Royalty Board. I testified. I was the lead witness. Mm-hmm. It's under the Copyright Royalty Board. It's under rate courts. BMI and ASCAP are viewed as monopolistic entities. Mm. So what our copyright system doesn't work for the music distribution system that we have. Mm-hmm. So what we need to do is, is change it and make it like many other countries in the world where hey, it's, it's great that you make a great record out of the words and music, mm-hmm. but the words and music deserve like kind of the same. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the, the common wisdom mm-hmm. that, that people would think, well, you know, I wrote Carrying Your Love With Me, and it sounded great. Yeah. Our demo sounded great, and then George made a great record on it, and so we should split that. Mm-hmm. That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works in, in America. Pandora, it's 14 to one, 14 times. So, so the one great, the one growth uh, PRO in America is Sound Exchange. Mm-hmm. They've gone from like exactly. 20 million bucks in, in 05 to almost $500 million. Mm. And they're just hitting the digital side. They're not hitting terrestrial thing. Mm. It, it'd be great if, if there was a, a performance right and for, for the digit for for uh, in the terrestrial side, it'd be mm-hmm. great if radio paid artists. They should. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they should terrestrial. They should do that. That, mm-hmm. that. But but that's a declining income stream, and the and the whole Spotify on demand thing is is increasing. Mm-hmm. So until we change that and make it make it pay to be a songwriter, we're not going to have. We're not going to have I Help You Dance. We're not going to have Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Right. We're just going to have writer artists that that it's all kind of right. kind of inside. It's so a shame it, that the content creator gets screwed. Totally. <laughs> it's actually, if, if I were going to do what, what I came to Nashville to do mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. and I knew what I know now, I would never do it. Mm. I would never do it be, un, un, unless... I thought things were going to change, and I think they may. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. we work on it, and I think so, it's possible. But so, it, but just that the deck is stacked really badly against mm-hmm. the content creator. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go, Willie go. Nelson couldn't couldn't make it today, probably. No way. Wow, that's a that's a big statement. That's a shame. Just a force of nature. If like if that. he came to town today. Mm-hmm. Whenever there's an election, the politicians come sniffing up our ass. It seems like it seems like our a lot of our organizations that we have. I don't want to name names, although I would if you asked. Oh, me. do I, I'm asking. Steal, <laughs> steal, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some names. Come we've on. Got, we've got Naris that won't even broadcast the engineering gr- and producer <laughs> awards. Right. Naris can't even get us credits. I mean. If you're not going to pay us, at least give us credit so somebody else cannot pay us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. And you know, and you know what? The the their proposal. Oh God, this is going to be on. <laughs> we can edit. We can control the proposal edit. <laughs> for for the public performance right does not include a right for producers and engineers. Mm-hmm. In 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 that thing, it it includes the artist, the record label, and a little five percent thing for musicians in in um, background singers. Does include producer or engineers that ha- they have to work that out themselves with, with the artists, which most mm-hmm. smart. Well, artists we've do. got the power. We just, we just have to figure out how to organize and use it. And I don't think we can do that through the current organizations. So, um, Steve, you're elected to start the organization. This is how I got to be a Cub Scout leader. <laughs> the foundation of what everything we're saying today is is we're we're really proud and the and we really support the tightness of this community. And this this kind of movement couldn't start in LA. It couldn't start in New York, but it could start in Nashville because it's a tight community and, and, and 
everybody in this room knows everybody else. I, I, I don't have that happen when I'm in Los Angeles. I have to introduce half of the people to half the people. And um, I don't want to turn this, this day into a, a political thing, but uh, so, I will. Um, <laughs> it just, it, it, if you get angry, it, it gets me angry too, you know? And I'm not even a songwriter, but without you guys, uh, the whole chain dries up. <laughs> That's for sure. So we got it. It's easy to say, you know, it's not my problem, but it is our problem. It is. So, so go. We're to not going to solve it today, but you know. Well, you might. I got a little time left. Let me let me think of some facts. <laughs> go to the other side of the equation. Plugins, good, bad, evil, not. What's the thought? They're coming They're along. Right. They're, They're coming along. There's improvements. Okay. There's new things to believe in. Okay. I got a question. I, I keep hearing that. And I'm, I'm not being a smart ass for a second. I keep hearing that plugins take jobs away from, from people. Explain that to me. Uh, how do they do that? Yeah, we got some friends in the building. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just have jobs because of plugins. That's <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, yeah, that's how that's you want to look at it. Yeah. You know, um, gain stage and how, how you get in and out of it is just as important now as it's ever been, mm -hmm. if not more. And busing and, and. But how does that take jobs away from people? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just trying to figure it out. Well, I mean, maybe there's people building gear. I mean, John, you know, I don't know how many people are employed building 1176s anymore, but, you know, there's a lot of computer programmers that are employed building plugins and, and new better better summing buses for Pro Tools or whatever your flavor is. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a different type of employment, but I can't, pro I can't honestly say that it's, it's costing people jobs. The and, second engineer isn't have you heard as prolific no, as it I used haven't. to be. And, and I'm, uh, John and I both said, plugins are incredible. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I can yeah. make that up, but I don't it, know. Explain that. I don't know. I heard that. Plugins are, um, <coughs> you know, they, they've, they, what makes them incredible now is that now they have vibe, they have color, they have character. distortion. They have yeah. that, among other things. There's other things, too. And non-linearity. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. It used to be, um, I'm boosting 2dB at this, and, the, and it was all mathematical, and it did what it was supposed to do, but it didn't have much soul. Yeah. Yeah. And now they are laden with soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you can turn them on flat, and there's a difference. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it yeah. sounds better just run, like, yeah. like real gear does. It sounds better running through the API. And just by putting it through it, it's better. Even if you don't touch a knob, and the plugins are starting to emulate that. It doesn't vibe. mean that the hardware is not great too. The hardware is great, right? But but the plugins have have made such incredible strides that mm. that uh, I'm gassed by. Well, and what I, what I love is you if you like the API on the drums, put the API on the drums. You want your vocals through the Neve, you can put your vocals through a Neve. How many studios can you line up consoles in? Mm -hmm and flavor every track exactly what's perfect for that track instead of having to compromise, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I got a question for the group. Do you think that, uh, do you think that 60 years from now, a young John McBride is gonna start collecting vintage plugins? <laughs> Not yet. Wow. Uh, 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 great question. John will have hey, them all. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the front job. He already has them. He's already started. Yeah. Exactly. He's got that He's Steinberg. He's all the black fest ADATs. <laughs> He's got that Steinberg plug-in stashed away somewhere. So the, the, the juxtaposition of legends, and, how, yeah. and you've done just such a great job of keeping that authenticity and that history, but you're combining it with technology in such a way so that you have that accessibility and, yeah. and that flexibility. Is that correct? Right, right. Well, and part necessity, yeah. Yeah. too. You yeah, know, you there's a, a the reality is if I spend 500 grand on a console, mm -hmm. How many more days a year am I going to book? Yeah. And how much is my day rate going to change? Yeah. Yeah. The reality is, not e I can't even cover the difference in the electric bill. Yeah. Is the reality. Because when you're booked 25 days a month anyway, mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to book more days. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have to try to get your clients that you already have to pay more money. Mm -hmm. Believe me, no, it would be. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. Yeah. no, I'm not. Hey, John, um, when I first moved to LA about 20 years ago, there was a big, big movement to stop the home studios. Uh, Larrabee, Conway, a lot of the big studios, record plant, got together and they got some government legislation passed to, to not to have home studios because they felt it infringed on on their 
on their profit because the home studio didn't have to pay taxes, didn't have to pay overhead, could get by with all the expenses that a place like this must be massive, the overhead. Do you think that the plug-in situation and the ability to take and use these plugins in a smaller environment and compete with Blackbird, do you see that as a threat to, to Blackbird? In other Not words, really, because I think that Nashville is one of the last bastions of places where the band shows up together mm -hmm. with the artist yeah. and a producer and mm -hmm. an engineer, and great music is made together at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you can't recreate that environment or that situation in your bedroom. Gotcha. Um, I, I feel like the quality of the players we have here, it's... Incredible. Uh, mo I, I, I won't say that there aren't some great projects that were made at home, mm -hmm. but I think the chances of having success are much, much higher when you come into a studio and have that environment to help, uh, and tradition. help you make your magic, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quincy cool. Jones told me one day, he, he called the studio church, that you couldn't have church at home. Yeah. You had to go to church. Mm -hmm. And I just said, ooh. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because there's, there's a lot of home studios. Home studios. Yeah. A lot of home studios. Yeah. But guys, there's about a two-year window there mm -hmm. where they've worked at home for about a year and a half, two years. The kids keep bugging, coming in and bothering them mm -hmm. or the phone's ringing or the wife's pissed off because I don't need this guy parking in our grass and mm -hmm. they're leaking oil and now they drink our beer and you know. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, you know what? I need to leave the house to go to work. Let me go to the studio. Or vice versa, it could be the woman yeah, doing yeah. it. But yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that working at home, it's nice to have that separation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna change the subject just to hear. I'm not an activist, I'm not, I'm not any of those kinds of things. I, I just have too big a temper and just want to blow things up instead of make changes the traditional ways. That, that, that's not a healthy, but I have a daughter and I have, I, have a, I have a young daughter, 21 years old, and she's in culinary, which is a male dominated industry. And so I, I, I started thinking about our industry in terms of young daughters. What can we do to get more women involved in, in in the process. What can Why we do? do that to them? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Why would we do that? We're smart for that, right? Eh? <laughs> so that's Why would we hurt well, the reason, I, know you tease, I know you're teasing, but the reason we do it is because <laughs> we truly love this. Everyone in here is passionate about it. And I think it's, it's, not, a, it's not necessarily something we need to leave here and, and go make signs in March. But I think when we have an opportunity, I think we ought to to bring more women in. I think it would actually help the industry because um, women do that. They make things better. And I think we should at least give a little thought to that. If we don't want to discuss it today, well, uh, let's we don't have Stephanie to. Let's get Stephanie and Melanie's take on that. What do you, Steph, what do you think? Well, the really interesting thing, when we were, when Herb and I were working to put this, this group together for tonight, it was really hard finding females, mm. especially in the engineering production um, side of things, of course, artists and songwriters, but I, I'm a former artist myself and it was just really shocking for me to be on this quest looking for females and not being able to find a lot. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I really wasn't aware of it. Mm -hmm. prior the future is bright. Blackbird had four women there, remember yes. her? And they, yes. they were I sharp as a tag. We had a really... conversation with them. Yeah. And, and they were enthusiastic too. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. Melanie, what's your take? I think that um, I've, I've never worried much about it being a male or female thing, even though it is. It's definitely a more in a male, a man's world, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. You know that as long as you've done it, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just feel like I don't mind as long as you're really great at what you do. But there's some really great women in this town. I know them. Well, I nobody, know them excludes them, nobody excludes women intentionally. They're just not drawn to the profession because of... Well, there's, and there'll be some, seconds looked at, too, really. Yeah. I mean, we try not to live in that world, but we still do. I mean... You know, yeah. if a woman, there's a guy, you know, a guy and a girl standing up there for the position in this industry right now, it still seems that it will, you know, the man will get it just because that's the way it's been. I mean, not the way it has to be, but it's not a less talent or more talent thing. I think it's just more easy. It's easier for yeah, them. Well, we're saying uh, in a lot of areas, there's change on the horizon and, and the change is unstoppable. Uh, let's make not all. Let's let's not make all the change bad. Let's make some of the change right. good. You know. Steve, what we What's start? amazing is that is that uh, I was riding in a cab in D.C. with 
with a the guy that runs SunTrust, and he was looking for female um, movers, shaker, music business people, mm-hmm. like right now, to be on the board of, of SunTrust. Mm-hmm. And thinking about like five, ten years ago, what's what's strange is we had Donna Hilly, mm-hmm. we had Connie Bradley. Mm-hmm. We we had we, I mean there there were there were some real sure. serious glass ceiling breakers mm-hmm. in this town for a while and we really don't quite we don't have as much of that now we don't have that aggressive that like break the glass ceiling right kind of women now mm-hmm. and I don't I don't know how you fix that mm-hmm. but it's amazing that it's almost like the deed was done and maybe know, that's what's wrong with everything that's what's wrong buddy call it as it is buddy absolutely yeah. Yeah. those absolutely. ladies were all just by nature Francis very Preston strong are you kidding me yeah. Yeah. Francis yeah. Preston was a was a an icon oh. but, and yeah. I don't think they spend a lot of time worrying about like you said they, did, you know, people, they don't spend a lot of time worrying about about whether it's a man or woman thing they just went out there and did it yeah they were a force yeah all up Nashville is an equal opportunity employer I think we have to just expose people, let's just say we have to expose people at a very young age to the potentials sure. and possibilities. I became an engineer very late in life because I just didn't think I could do it. And I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> and and I, so I'm guessing that, that that's probably the biggest impediment is sometimes you just don't think, you know, like, did you ever think you could do this, John? No. I mean, so maybe that's the problem. Maybe we need to show as early as a couple hours ago. I <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Martina told me that, but I'm not going to share that with you. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm a big, I am being beside, involved with Martina's career for the yep. last 22 years, whatever it's been. I see how women don't get treated fairly. Mm-hmm. And man, I am all about women having power. I have three daughters. Me right? too, brother. <laughs> Me too. And I just thought that was my karma. But you know what? Women, <laughs> <laughs> growing up, every day at the dinner table, boys are dumb and girls are smart. Just remember this, girls. Mm-hmm. Now, boys get smart after they've been married a while and the wife trains. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. Road road. The road. They <laughs> don't, those girls, our girls, know they can be the president of the United States. That's, That's right. what they want to be. That's right. Yeah. And I am all about women having, because I think women are smarter than men in general, mm. and they don't, they don't make decisions for the wrong reasons sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And well, I, I just think it should be. I'm, I'm so glad we have girls in our uh, girl students. We know, are at the Blackbird Academy because we need more women engineers. Uh-huh. Well, I promise you. Well, I, I can do. tell you that you got a you got a partner in that endeavor because from the day we started the show. That was an important space for me personally for lots of different reasons. And we're encouraged in that we see in our emails and stuff a lot of women who want to be there, a lot of women who travel to the events we do. We see them enrolled in schools, and they're ready to compete. They're not looking for any concessions. They just want to get the opportunity yep. to do their thing. And, when we, and we've had f- female engineers on and producers and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. and they can go toe-to-toe. They can do what they need to do. What are talking about, Liz? Well, I mean, Leslie, Leslie Ann Jones at, um, at George Lucas Skywalker Ranch. She and, runs the whole audio program. And what's Ann's last name? Ann Minceli. Ann Minceli in, in New York. She's Alicia Keys. Person. Beautiful she facility. Runs, she is more of a gear nut than any other gear nut I know. I was just sitting there. She was just blinding me. My eyes just rolled back in my head. Like, <laughs> Jesus, where are we going with this? So, so I, I think it's important <coughs> because beyond, beyond the fact that it's the right thing to do, it brings something to the music. It brings another sort of intuition. There's another thing that we can't do that folks can do. And I'm always inspired by the music going to other places. So.